Good morning and welcome to Morning Prayer for Tuesday, September 15th. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Sing to the Lord and bless his name, proclaim his salvation from day to day. Give to the Lord the glory and strength, give him the honor due his name. Alleluia, alleluia. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Praise to you, O Christ. O come, let us worship him. Our Old Testament reading today is from Second Chronicles chapter 34. Hosiah was eight years old when he began to reign, and he reigned thirty-one years in Jerusalem. And he did what was right in the eyes of the Lord, and walked in the ways of David his father, and he did not turn aside to the right hand or to the left. For in the eighth year of his reign, while he was yet a boy, he began to seek the God of David his father, and in the twelfth year he began to purge Judah and Jerusalem of the high places, the Asherim, and the carved and the metal images. And they chopped down the altars of the Baals in his presence, and he cut down the incense altars that stood above them, and he broke in pieces the asherim and the carved and the metal images, and he made dust of them and scattered it over the graves of those who sacrificed to them. Now in the eighteenth year of his reign, when he had cleansed the land in the house, he sent Shaphan, the son of Azaliah, and Meesa, the governor of the city, and Joah, the son of Yohaz, the recorder, to repair the house of the Lord his God. They came to Hilkiah the high priest and gave him the money that had been brought into the house of God, which the Levites, the keepers of the threshold, had collected from Manasseh and Ephraim, and from all the remnant of Israel, and from all Judah and Benjamin, and from the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And they gave it to the workmen who were working in the house of the Lord. And the workmen who were working in the house of the Lord gave it for repairing and restoring the house. They gave it to the carpenters and to the builders to buy quarried stone and timber for binders and beams for the buildings that the kings of Judah had let go to ruin. While they were bringing out the money that had been brought into the house of the Lord, Hilkiah the priest found the book of the law of the Lord given through Moses. Then Hilkiah answered and said to Shaphan the secretary, I have found the book of the law in the house of the Lord. And Hilkiah gave the book to Shaphan. Shaphan brought the book to the king and further reported to the king, All that was committed to your servants they are doing. They have emptied out the money that was found in the house of the Lord, and given it into the hand of the overseers and the workmen. Then Shaphan the secretary told the king, Hilkiah the priest has given me a book. And Shaphan read from it before the king. And when the king heard the words of the law, he tore his clothes. And the king commanded Hilkiah, Ahikam the son of Shaphan, Abdon the son of Micah, Shaphan the secretary, and Isaiah the king's servant, saying, Go, inquire of the Lord for me and for those who are left in Israel and in Judah, concerning the words of the book that has been found. For great is the wrath of the Lord that is poured out on us, because our fathers have not kept the word of the Lord, to do according to all that is written in this book. So Hilkiah and those whom the king had sent went to Huldah the prophetess, the wife of Shalom, the son of Tokath, son of Hashra, keeper of the wardrobe. Now she lived in Jerusalem in the second quarter, and spoke to her to that effect. And she said to them, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, Tell the man who sent you to me, Thus says the Lord, Behold, I will bring disaster upon this place and upon its inhabitants, all the curses that are written in the book that was read before the king of Judah because they have forsaken me and have made offerings to other gods that might provoke me, provoke me to anger with all the works of their hands. Therefore my wrath will be poured out on this place and will not be quenched. But to the king of Judah, who sent you to inquire of the Lord, thus shall you say to him, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, Regarding the words that you have heard, because your heart was tender and you humbled yourself before God, when you heard the words against this place and its inhabitants, and you have humbled yourself before me, and have torn your clothes, and wept before me, I have heard you, declares the Lord. 
Behold, I will gather you to your fathers, and you shall be gathered to your grave in peace, and your eyes shall not see all the disaster I will bring upon this place and its inhabitants. And they brought back word to the king. Then the king sent and gathered together all the elders of Judah and Jerusalem. And the king went up to the house of the Lord with all the men of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem and the priests and the Levites, all the people, both great and small. And he read in their hearing all the words of the book of the covenant that had been found in the house of the Lord. And the king stood in his place and made a covenant before the Lord to walk after the Lord and to keep his commandments and his testimonies and his statutes with all his heart and all his soul to perform the words of the covenant that were written in this book. Then he made all who were present in Jerusalem and in Benjamin join in it. And the inhabitants of Jerusalem did according to the covenant of God, the fathers, the God of their fathers. And Hosea took away all the abominations from all the territory that belonged to the people of Israel, and made all who were present in Israel serve the Lord their God. All his days they did not turn away from following the Lord, the God of their fathers. Our writing this morning. Oh, we skipped our psalm. Our psalm today is Psalm 1. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by streams of water that yields its fruit in its season, and its leaf does not wither. In all that he does he prospers. The wicked are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind drives away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. Our writing this morning is from the Book of Concord, the solid declaration of the Formula of Concord, Article 8, beginning in paragraph 64 on the two natures in Christ. This is what we hold and teach in conformity with the ancient Orthodox Church, as it has explained this teaching from the Scriptures. The human nature in Christ has received this majesty through the personal union. This happened because the entire fullness of the divinity dwells in Christ, Colossians 2.9, not as in other holy men or angels, but bodily, as in its own body. The divinity shines forth with all its majesty, power, glory, and effectiveness, in the received human nature. It does this voluntarily when and as Christ wills. In, with, and through that human nature, Christ shows, uses, and acts on his divine power, glory, and efficacy, as the soul does in the body and fire in glowing iron. By means of these illustrations, as was also mentioned above, the entire ancient church has explained this doctrine. This power was concealed and withheld at the time of the humiliation, but now, after the form of a servant has been laid aside, it is fully, powerfully, and publicly exercised before all saints, in heaven and on earth. In the life to come we shall also behold his glory face to face. John 7, 20, 17, 24. There is and remains in Christ only one divine omnipotence, power, majesty, and glory, which is peculiar to the divine nature alone, but it shines, manifests, and exercises itself fully, yet voluntarily, in, with, and through the received, exalted human nature in Christ. And uh, just a quick note when it talks about how the, the divine power was concealed and withheld at the time of the humiliation, the time of the humiliation is actually the incarnation. So as soon as Christ became a human being up to the ascension that is the humiliation uh, sometimes folks think that only means uh, holy week the the during uh, his arrest his uh, trials beatings and then his crucifixion but the humiliation actually stands for the entire time uh, Christ was on earth uh, so if you ever notice uh, many pastors and I try to remember to do it during the Creed when we talk about and was made man in the Nicene Creed or uh, was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, they bow their head. That is acknowledging the humiliation. That's why we do that. Uh, so it has nothing to do with Mary. It's all about Jesus becoming a human being. Okay, we join together in 
the Apostles' Creed and the Lord's Prayer. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, Heavenly Father, we praise your fathomless mercy with which you take pity on sinful men. All the prophets and apostles preach this to us in your holy word. Let our hope not be put to shame when we pray to you for all who suffer at this time. For behold, the evil foe has become mighty, and the great ones of this world rule often with unrighteousness. O God, who in former times caused your saints to overcome injustice, strengthen also today all who stand in need of your help. Grant that all prisoners of war, held as slaves and sacrifices of earthly wrath, may return to their home. Stand by all refugees and homeless people and be their justice. Be a father to the widows and orphans with your strong protection. Go through bars and fences to those who are imprisoned for the sake of your name, strengthen them for a good witness, and let them not waver in the confession of your name. Teach us through their example and the example of so many holy martyrs, to be ever watchful of the confession of your Son's name. Let us not be put to shame when the evil foe lays his hand on us. But if it is your will that we be persecuted for confessing Jesus as our Lord and only Savior, then support us in your grace, that we may withstand all trials, and grant us peaceful rest. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O God, because without you we are not able to please you, mercifully grant that your Holy Spirit may in all things direct and rule our hearts. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Have a blessed day.